up guys? Um, time for another exciting video. Today we're going to be finally working on the display for the iMac. It's going to be awesome. Um, so long story short, um, bought this on eBay. They sent me the wrong part. It's actually the right part, but wrong accessories with the part. They sent me this little ribbon cable. Instead of a cable that plugs into a standard 30 pin LVDS connector. So um, you can see on the board here, uh, I know you see my face camera here. Look at this thing. We have these little solder points here where there should be pins attached, but there are not. Um, so what we're gonna do, since um, this is the wrong part, uh, contact the seller. Uh, I was supposed to send it back. They never got back to me about a shipping label. label. Uh, they just refunded it and said to keep the part. So uh, we're going to attempt to solder directly to these points, which I don't really want to do because it makes it a lot harder to take apart. But it's easier than waiting another month for possibly the wrong part again to come in the mail. Because um, I made sure when I ordered it that I got one that had the pins. It's supposed to come with the cable too, but it didn't. In this crappy ribbon cable. The problem with the ribbon cable is every LCD panel has a different pinout for its LV LVDS connector. God knows what pinout they used. Anyway, so what do we need? Uh, well, we've got our soldering arm warming up. Uh, we've got the cable that came with the laptop. Uh, so we're going to nip the end off, strand the wires out, um, and then figure out where the pins go. Um, on that note, I do have pinouts for the LCD, and I have pinouts for the board itself. So uh, with all that, I should be able to get it hooked up. So uh, I wanted to do more than just showing what I'm doing with this, because a lot of videos that say, here's how to do this online, uh, but nobody really walks you through the steps of how to figure out what you need. Um, and that's something I'm going to try and knock out quickly, uh, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, anyway, uh, one of the most important things you can do here is get your data sheets. You need the data sheets for your LCD before you try and add any kind of display driver to it. Because uh, like I said a minute ago, every connector is wired differently. So to do that, you look up, you look up the model number for your display. Not me, here. Uh, and that'll tell you the brand and the model number and everything you need to know. Punch that into Google. and. Um, find the, uh, the data sheet for it. So when you find it, it'll give you a pin out. Looks something like this. It tells you what all your signal wires do, where all the pins go, and what they do. Uh, so there's a few things you want to look out for. There are several standards. Uh, so number one, max resolution of your panel. It'll be written on the data sheet, usually the first page. Uh, number two, the number of bits that it uses. Uh, it usually says, mine did not, but we figured it out and I'll show you how. And number three, how many channels it is. Um, and that usually is, uh, and that's usually pretty self-explanatory. Uh, on the data sheet itself, it'll say one channel, two channel, what, what have you. Uh, mine is a very detailed sheet that explains how all the signals work, but doesn't explicitly say one channel, two channel, six bit, eight bit, whatever. But it is a six bit, one channel. Uh, max resolution of it's the whatever by 768. I don't remember offhand. I didn't print that page. So, to make this easy on you, what you need to do when you find your data sheet is look at your pinouts and find how many data inputs there are. Let's see, data input, data input, data input, data input. And that's all. There's a clock too, but and the rest are no connections. Uh, so, what you're looking for here is we have data input plus minus, data input plus minus, data input plus minus. So that's, each of those is a bit that the signal is using. So you have one, two, three, four, or five, six bits. Easy as pie. Not the 3.14 pie, but like the tiny E. I like, I like that kind of pie, it's good pie, I'm fat. So that's, that's a way you can tell what you have. Uh, as far as the one or two channel, um, I don't really have any notes on that, about how to figure that out. Oh. So I believe when there's a second channel, you'll have a second set of one, two, three bits. So like, there would be like six more data bits. I'm guessing. I don't know. I don't have a lot of experience with this, but enough so that I can figure this out with what I've got. So um, if I'm totally off on that. Let me know in the comments. But that's what I figured out. So uh, never learned this stuff in school. So I don't know. 
All right, well, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do, other than get the soldering arm warming up, is to unplug both of these connectors. Uh, it's connected here and at the driver board for the backlight. Uh, and my manual did have a pin after that as well. But I need to do more research before we start wiring things up to that. Oh, let's see what we're working with under here. Let's get some lights. Ah, nothing like a well-lit workspace, guys. If it's like blown completely out now, I'm sorry. I don't know how to adjust it. So let's be really careful. Cut this fabric off. Also, I might add, this is not something I recommend doing. Just buy the cable. All right, so let's just snip these off very carefully. And we'll um, go from there. Which one of these goes where? They're not colored at all, so that's fun. So, I think what we're going to have to do is just kind of play a twister with them. So, like, as we figure out which one is which, we uh, solder it in place. With the supplies I have, there's no way we're going to be able to separate them out like that. So, I think we're hot on the solder iron now. So, one thing you can do, which I don't really recommend, but it does work, when you're desoldering through holes, you can use your desoldering gun, or pump rather, and touch here, and you set the other side. That works pretty well. all the ports that we need for that because I've done my research yay this might be too small for me to work with with the tools that I've got so the green one should be these first three pins here right one two three four maybe that doesn't look right at all so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to open up this connector and see what it looks like underneath, underneath this cover right here. Because I'm pretty confused right now by this pen out. If you can't see what I'm doing, oh, there's two little tabs on the end that pry up. It looks like this whole pot metal panel should slide open now. So what I'm wondering is if these wires coming in at this weird angle go directly to pins like that, or if they attach to a board first. Okay, so... Uh, that's troublesome. So each of these small wires, these blue wires, are actually a pair of wires. So that means that this is going to be even harder than I thought. Plenty of cable to work with. Let's see what we can do. So this is actually two wires, apparently. Hmm. Oh, oh, I see it. Good lord, these are like the smallest wires ever. I don't know if you guys can even see these wires. Can you even see these wires? These wires are. Wow, it's small enough that I can't even get it with my caliper. Let's let's just go with that. It's small enough I can't measure my caliper. So how in the hell am I supposed to solder 12 of these to a board if I can't even see them? Oh, I think that we'll use method two, and we'll try that first. And if that doesn't work, then we'll just buy a cable. So method two is going to be taking this port here, and we just solder to those pins. You know, I've soldered stuff that small before, it's not great, but it's not that bad. 
Let's grab a little patch wire and see if we can even hit that target and we'll go from there. Alright, so let's get one of these guys that doesn't have a connection on it. Like that guy. Let's see if we can even... So basically I'm at the point of, if this doesn't work, I'm going to have to buy a cable anyway. And we will give it a whirl. Hmm. And it should work. Cool. Okay, so we'll use, I guess, orange for the power. That's fine. Yeah, this is gonna fall under too small for the equipment I've got. There's like literally no way for me to do this and not hit multiple pens. Come back here. And it's ruined. Alright, well, that was a failure. So, I uh, guess we're going to buy a cable. I can't tell if that's still connected or not. I mean, either way, I cannot work with these cables, they're too damn small. Like, so here's an example, like, even if I got this cable, right, I got this cable to peel off, it's, um, minus one, right? So minus one goes in pen ten, so, one, two, three, four, five down on this side. Even if I strip this down correctly, how in the hell is that going to stay soldered in like that? It's not, that's how. So, we're going to, uh, concede... This really sucks, I've been trying to, been looking forward to working on this for like two weeks now. Alright, so it's a few days later, I've had a few more days to think about this thing. Um, and one of the things that I figured out that I can do is actually remove this connector. Then we can use this ribbon cable that it came with, and then we're going to try and splice the individual pins here to the removed pins here, just to kind of a point to point solder, and see if we can get that to work. Um, I mean, if it doesn't work, we have a bad new board regardless, so there's really no risk in doing this at this point. So we're going to remove this connector and try some point-to-point. -point. And so we get the screen turned on. Let's go to Whirl. Oh, if I turn off some lights, wouldn't it? So we can actually see what I'm doing. Can you guys still see what I'm doing? Giant shadow when I put my hand here. How about that? So giant shadow? Not as bad, okay. Okay, so we got the connector up. <clears throat> it looks like it's still connected at a few points here. Uh, I'm just gonna go behind them and just nick them. The ones that are still connected, and they should just come right off. Okay. So it survived mostly intact. Uh, we did lose a few connectors along the way, but these are pretty simple connectors to stick back in. Um, we lost a few traces too, but those are traces on the side that we don't really care about, so it's not a big deal. And like I said at the beginning, if we screw it up, we gotta buy a new one anyway, so no oh, bigs. So I'm just gonna go through real quick and make sure that all the pins that I need are in here. And if they're not, I can move some around and make sure we have all the pins taken care of. So basically, we just need to get it so that this little tab part is on the back. And bottom. Stick it back in. Just get it all the way in. Okay, so basically what we're gonna do now is we're going to wire up, I don't know whether they go to the board first or this connector first. They're both gonna be super fragile once they're together. I think it's gonna be easier to go to the board first and then have this stable and then wire to this from the board. I think that'll be a lot easier to do. So let me get that set up and I'll set up that shot and I'll be back. 
All right, so we're gonna start with the board and we're just gonna add the jumpers to this uh, and then we'll trim them to fit on the other side as we need to. We're gonna be using an old floppy cable because uh, these pins are solid core, they're nice and solid, uh, easy to work with. Um, and they're small enough that I can get in there point to point and it's not gonna be a problem. Let's just leave this whole connector attached until we get this side done and then we'll figure out how much length we need. One of the bad parts about this cable is it's so small that I have to strip my teeth. Which I don't recommend doing. I don't think you're supposed to actually strip wires this small. Most wires this small use like punch down connectors. So you just punch them into the sleeve and they go into you. And they strip themselves when they go in. That's what these are on the ends. But work with what we got. Alright. So we got a whole bunch of strip wires. And we're just gonna mark this side with the Sharpie to know that it's side one. Since we used the actual side one a long, long time ago. Okay. That'll help us keep this straight once we get it all hooked up. So wiring this thing in is actually pretty simple. Ah. It's just gonna bend it over like that, solder it in, and then nip off the end. There we go. So one of the keys here is you need to heat the wire and the socket, not the solder. So if what I did the first time there was I ended up hitting the solder itself, which just made a big solder blob that wouldn't go into the hole. Sure it's not touching that blob on the side of it because it looks like it might be. But it's not good. So yeah, I think pre-tinning is gonna be the way to go here. Let's give ourselves a little more room to work. Alright, so pin two is voltage 3.3 and pin five is also or pin three is also voltage 3.3. So those go side by side and pin one and two respectively. Now, I actually soldered that first pin into the wrong spot, so we have to actually desolder that and redo it. So that kind of sucks. If any of you guys caught that I did this wrong the first time, let me know because that would be interesting. I don't pretend to be an expert, guys. I'm not. I'm just a dude who does this for fun. Technique that I don't like to use, but it does work. We're gonna use the hot needle technique. Get the hole out. Basically, you stick a needle in it, heat up the needle until it's hot enough to melt the solder, clean the needle off on the other side. back there you got a clean hole don't like doing that but it works okay 
Okay, that one's actually not connected. Alright, so we managed to get everything wired up, except for one, which we ended up burning the whole lot on. See right there. So, in an attempt to go around that, since there were no more contacts, we attempted to go to the solder point on the board, on the chip itself, and we fucked it up. Because my tools just literally aren't small to do that, so it's dead. So, I'm going to break it. You guys want to see me break it? Ow! I thought I was going to break it. Well, I'm going to break it. And then let's just... Buy the right part. Don't do this. It's like three hours wasted. Anyway, that's it for now. See you in the next one.